Are you ready to create the impossible triangle animation? Today, we're gonna to make this animation using DaVinci Resolve and Fusion. We can use some shape nodes, some duplicate nodes, a little bit of time offset, and other things in there to create a really interesting animation. This animation can be a little bit trickier than you think to set up, because if you look at it, all the cubes look like they're on top of each other, but they can't be. Obviously, something has to not be on top of another one. Um, so it's a little bit confusing, a little bit tricky when you look at it, but it's a really interesting effect. Unfortunately, it may be impossible to do this the way I started out. Sometimes you start doing an animation and you figure out that it's not gonna work the way you think and you kind of reroute and try something else. And that's what I did with this one and I got it to work just like I wanted to. I really was trying to do it in the new shape system that has the feature with the duplicate node to duplicate along a path. But unfortunately, I think it may be really impossible to do it like that. Um, I'm not sure if it's a bug or if there's something I didn't quite understand, but the cubes, didn't lay on top of each other the way you would think. Um, when we get in there, you'll take a look and uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. If you're enjoying my videos, make sure that you like, subscribe, and uh, definitely, hey, leave some comments below. Let me know what you think. Um, I'd love to hear what you think about my videos. If you have any questions, thoughts, ideas, um, leave them down below. I'll try to get back to everyone that I can. Okay, it's impossible time. Do you think you can do it? I know you can, let's get started. Um, this, is what we, this is what we're gonna be creating today. This is the uh, kind of a basic animation we have set up with all these cubes kind of rotating and sitting on top of each other. Um, let's get started. We're gonna take this and blow it away and get uh, started with a fresh composition. Okay, let's go. This is the impossible triangle. So we're gonna start by making a triangle. We're gonna use the shape system to do this. Let's uh, add a background node in and connect that up to media out. And that's gonna give us a black background. Let's put that in the viewer. Hit uh, media out in two. There's our black background. Let's use the shape system to add our triangle. Click in the node area, hit control space and search for S in gone. And this is gonna let us set up a shape with any number of sides. Hit control space and search for S render. And that's gonna render our shape from the shape system. And we're gonna merge that right on top of the background. Obviously a few too many sides here. So click on the end gone, go to the inspector and set the number of sides to three. All right, that's a good start. Now we just want the bottom of the triangle to align parallel to the bottom of the screen. And it looks like about negative 30 is gonna do that for us. So we change the angle to negative 30. And I'm gonna bring this triangle down. So this is the reference triangle for not only setting up the animation, but also setting up the faces on our cube. All right, let's go to the end gun and we're gonna hit style and let's, we're not gonna really use this. So let's take the opacity and bring it down pretty low because we're gonna put some stuff right on top of it. The reference triangle is ready to go. Now let's build our cubes. We're gonna use three shapes to do this, three rectangle shapes. We're gonna take them and adjust the angles and positioning to build a cube looking thing. We're gonna, do the, we're gonna do this in the shape system. Let's set up the first face of our cube. Click in the node area, hit control space, and search for S rectangle. And we're gonna put that into the merge and take the output of this merge and put it right on top of that end gone. Obviously this is way too big. So what we're gonna do is in the inspector, right click on the height, choose expression, connect the height to the width, and just drag it down. Now we just need to adjust the cube so that it matches the angle of the triangle. So outside of this merge, hit to control space and search for S transform. And this is gonna allow us to move our cube around. So we need to get the angles to match. So first thing we're gonna do is take the rectangle and change the angle to 45. And we want the angle of the, uh, let's make it a little bit bigger so you can see. We want the angle of the cube to match the angle of the triangle. And we're gonna use another transform to do this. So click on the rectangle, hit control space and search for S transform. And on this one, all we need to do is adjust the X size. And you see that it's getting there. And we want this angle, we want the angles to match. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this bottom transform and we're gonna slide this up a little bit. And let's try to make the tops match. It looks like it's offset just a little bit here. And we're gonna bring the Y offset up to right where, right there. And then go to the, go to the top transform. And this is where we can adjust the X size. And we're gonna bring it out and have the angle pretty much be pretty close to the angle of the triangle. And I'm hitting control to get a little, while I'm dragging, to get a little more precise. Okay, that's the first face. We just need to make two more. Let's add two more shape transform nodes. Copy that, paste it. Okay, we got two there. We're gonna take that first face and put it into the first transform and then put it into the second transform. Okay, so these are gonna be our two faces. So let's take both of these transforms and put them into this merge here and they're all sitting on top of each other. So we just need to kind of move them around. You see that we can slide this one around and then we can slide this one. Now that we have our three faces, let's set the color on each and then adjust the angling to make our cube. Let's move this around a little bit. So we have the three faces. Let's set each of the faces to a different color. Click in the node area, hit control space and search for S change style. 
and we're gonna copy it and paste it, and we're gonna have three of these, one for each of the faces. So hold, hold um, while dragging the first one, hold Shift and put it over the, the first line for the first transform. I'm gonna do the next one, and then the third one. So drag the third one and hold, drag it over that line and connect it up. And let's change the color. So hit Change Style. I'm gonna set the first one to, let's say, yellow. The second one will set to green. And the third one will set to red. I'm gonna reset the position and get the first cube set up. I'll set the rotation to 60 degrees, and then just slide it into place. And then transform the third transform. We're gonna set the, the rotation on this one to minus 60 and slide that one into place. And there we go, we have a cube and we're ready to start animating. So it's a little bit big, so that's what we're gonna use this transform down here for. So this is, take a look at what we have here. These are the, th the three faces going into this merge right here. And then we have a transform on the bottom and that's gonna allow us to adjust the, uh, move the full cube around. So we're gonna right click on the Y size, choose expression, connect it to the X size, and now we can make it a little bit smaller if we want. Okay, now that we have the cube set up, we're gonna use a duplicate node to have it duplicate along the path of our triangle. Now, unfortunately, the duplicate, in the duplicate node in the shape system has a really cool feature that allows us to duplicate it along a path, but there's a little problem with this where the shapes don't overlay properly. I'm gonna show you how to use that real quick. Um, you may wanna use this in some of your animations, but I don't think it's gonna work for this one. So outside of this transform, hit Control Space and search for S Duplicate. And down here, this is the new option down here, duplicate along path. So we're gonna click that. And all we need to do is draw the path in the viewer. So we're gonna click the, the top corner right up here. Then this one and the bottom corner. And then we're gonna close it up right there. That looks great. Now this is where to duplicate if we wanted to do um, say 25 of these, we could do 25 and there you go. It almost does what we need, except you'll notice that right here, I take a look at this one in spe specific right here. This yellow face should be on fully on top of this green face, but it's not. So this has something to do with the layering of the shape system and the way nodes are duplicated and put on top of things in some kind of a in some kind of a layering layering order. So um, because this won't work, we're going to have to use the regular duplicate node and do some tricks with timing, but we can still create a great animation. Let's uh, go ahead and delete this, and then we're going to take this ingon and we're going to move it out of this animation. We're going to disconnect it from the merge and add another s render node. And we're going to merge that back on top because we're going to be duplicating this and we don't want to duplicate the triangle in the background. So we're getting pretty close here. Let's move this up. So outside of this render node, we're going to, um, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to duplicate along a path. So there's not really a way to do that, but we can actually have the cube animate along a path. So let's start with that. We're going to take the polygon node and drag it into the node area. And then we're going to click the same, just like we did before, we're going to click each of these uh, corners here, each of the, uh, the corner parts of our triangle and connect it up. Click on the render, hit control space and search for transform. And we're gonna wanna have the transform use a path. Now this is this is a really uh, convenient way to do this. All you need to do is right click on the center property of the transform and choose path. And then go into the modifiers area. And we already have our path set up, which is this polygon. So we want the, the cube to move along that polygon path. So let's click on the transform modifiers, right click here where it says shape animation and choose connect to polygon one, polyline. And that connects our cube up to the path that we just created. Or un uncheck the, uh, the keyframe there to reset it. And now we can move the cube along that path. Okay, we have our triangle polygon shape, we have our cube. Let's animate the cube along the triangle shape using the polygon path. So we have the transform one and modifiers, and you'll see that we have this displacement here. And this is where we're gonna use the displacement to move it along. So for each side of the triangle, we want it to be about 30 frames. So let's go to the frame, frame zero. Let's go to frame zero, click the keyframe on displacement and go to frame 30. Okay, we're on frame 30 and we're gonna just take the displacement and slide it down this side over here until it gets to the corner. And right there at 30 frames, it is at the corner. Let's go another 30 frames. So we're gonna be at frame 60 and keep moving the displacement along until it gets to the corner down there. Stop it right there. All right, and then another 30 frames. Let's go, that is gonna be, let's put us at 90. And we're gonna move that all the way to, this placement all the way to one. So, so it's gonna go around the path in 90 frames. Now that we have the cube animating along this path, we're gonna use a duplicate node 
to make copies of it and offset the time to fill in the gaps so it fills up the entire um, edge of the triangle. Okay, so our displacement looks good. Let's go to the first frame, click Transform 1, hit Control Space, and search for a duplicate and add that in. This is where we're going to make copies of the cube along that path we just animated with a, using a time offset to fill in the gaps so it takes up all the sides. So click the duplicate and let's start with, uh, let's say you have 10 copies. Okay, you're not seeing anything there because we need to adjust the time offset. And let's set the time offset to six. I played around with this and that seems to work well. So you can see our cubes are right there. There's a cube right here in the corner and we want the cubes to kind of fill in the rest of the triangle. So let's add some more in. Let's uh, put in, I think 15 was the number that's gonna get us there. Okay, there we go. So the cubes are kind of filling all the sides of our triangle and we want them a little bit bigger so that they're gonna overlap. So this is where we're gonna go back to the shape node and this transform right here. So we're gonna adjust the size of the cubes so that they're overlapping. And let's take a look at the animation. And they all kind of eventually go away because the, the animation that we did on this transform, it actually stops. So the duplicate's gonna stop. So let's try getting this animation to repeat and see what happens. So um, it's right now it's stopping right here. The cube goes all the way around back to the beginning and it stops. So let's repeat it and see what happens. So hit the uh, transform node, go to the spline editor, search for the displacement, click zoom to fit, highlight all the points, and we're gonna hit this set relative. And that's just gonna keep the animation going. So it looks like this, but there are a few problems. Um, if you see this cube right here, it's sitting on top of the first cube and it really needs to be below it. And this cube is gonna stay on top of everything that's in front of it, which is gonna kind of break our animation. You see right here, this one's on top. And let's go a little bit further. And again, right here, it's sitting on top of the one in front of it and it needs to be below it. Um, so we're gonna try something a little bit different. Um, there's Obviously we could do this, we could do some masking, do some interesting things. But I'm also wanting to do some effects, kind of start, stop, some different things. So we're going to try a time speed node and see what we can do with that. Let's go to the transform, click this button. We're going to select all these and we're going to take away the set relative and go back to what we had before. And this is where we're going to use a time speed node, the magic of the time speed node. So with merge, the merge selected, this is the merge that's underneath all the duplicates. Hit control space and search for time speed. Okay, now it's time to use the time speed node. What we're going to do is we're going to adjust the time offset with the delay to control the animation. All we need to do is get each block to move one position and then we just need to repeat it. So for example, we just need to go this block right here down to there. So we're gonna to go to the very first frame and we're gonna keyframe the delay, go over six frames and we're gonna set the delay to six. And that's gonna have the animation start here and move that one position. It's gonna block over once and stop. And we're gonna repeat this. So let's actually go to frame 12 and we're gonna set another keyframe. We're gonna hold it at six. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna animate for six frames, hold for six frames, and then we're gonna we're gonna repeat that. So let's go to the spline editor and check delay and hit this to show you all the keyframes. And you see we have, um, this is zero, six, and six. So we're gonna highlight those and click this option to repeat. And you'll see it's just gonna keep repeating this animation where it's gonna slide a block, hold it, and then do it again. And this is the basic animation. Now you'll notice we have a problem up here, right on the top. And this is because as these du each of these duplicates is placed on top of the other one, so the very last duplicate is gonna be on top of the first block. With this right here, we kind of lose that repeating, infinite, impossible effect. So we're gonna use some masking to fix this. We're gonna, gonna copy this duplicate node and paste it there. And we're gonna take the output of the transform into the duplicate, so let's take a look right here. And for this one, we don't want all these. We're just going to repeat the first three blocks. So copies, we're going to set it to three. And then let's take a look at the time speed node. We're going to, we have a duplicate of these first three blocks and we're going to take this duplicate and we're going to merge it and we're going to merge it after the main triangle. And you see, once we do that, those three blocks now go on top of the ones before. So you can see when we disconnect it and then put it back on, well, actually we can use the blend mode. Let's pull the blend mode down. So here we have that re repeating infinite effect, but there's another problem we have right here. These three blocks are now on top of the ones below it, and that's creating a problem, but we're gonna use some masking to fix this. So let's go right here. We're gonna get this polygon mask. Let's zoom in, and we're gonna just draw, draw it right along that block, zoom out, and we're gonna draw it around the blocks that we want to have and we're gonna connect it. And then we're gonna take the polygon and we're gonna 
So you watch right there. We're going to take the polygon and drag it into this merge. And there we go. Let's just kind of tune this up a little bit. Put it right on the corners of these blocks. And that will do it. That's just that little bit of masking and we have our animation ready to go. And we can use the, uh, the transform here and make it bigger block, bigger blocks. And then the last thing I did to kind of make it a little bit easier, and we come up to each of these faces and let's uh, change the color so we can do, uh, let's make them kind of a blue. We'll make this one a uh, medium blue. This one over here, a dark blue. And then the top one, kind of we'll make this kind of a lot lighter blue. So you can make those any color that you want. Make this one a little bit darker. We still have the background triangle in there. We can take the blend mode on that and bring it all the way down. And then once these colors are all the same, we could use a color corrector here. So we could, uh, with this merge selected, um, hit control space and search for CC to get a color corrector. And then we could just uh, adjust the hue to whatever we want. And then in the, uh, actually in the time speed, real quick, let me show you this. So if we go in and uh, go to the spline editor and let's get rid of that delay. I'll show you what that does super quick. Keyframe one and we'll get this keyframe right here and we're just gonna delete it reselect these and repeat. So we're not going to have the pause in there and this is what it looks like. Lots of different things you can do, but that's the, uh, that's the basics of the impossible triangle animation with a block cube looking thing. That's uh, all using the shape system and a duplicate nose, a little time offset, and you got a really cool, interesting effect. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate everyone's support. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I got a lot more coming soon. Make sure you subscribe, like the video, and comment below and let me know what you think.